Hello foodies, home chefs. Welcome to the Chef Lunch Show. And tonight we're making crawfish etouffee. It's a quick, simple thing. It's got one technical part of it that uh, could be a challenge till you learn it, but it's simple to learn. I learned when I was six years old how to make a roux. But this is the crawfish etouffee we're about to make. So come join us. And by the way, please kindly smash that like button, share this video with your friends and family, and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you on the other side. Let's cook this thing. Welcome back foodies and home chefs to the Chef Lance Show. Tonight, crawfish etouffee. And the star of the show, crawfish tails. Let's get started. By the way, in uh, etouffee in French means to smother or to be smothered. And so we're gonna make a uh, really a basic rich stew that uh, we will smother the crawfish in, crawfish etouffee, and we're gonna serve that with some rice. So let's get started with our ingredients. First, we're gonna start with the trinity. Now in French cooking, they call their aromatic vegetables mirepoix, but in Louisiana, they don't use the same combination. Uh, in mirepoix, it's onion, carrots, and celery, but in, uh, in Louisiana cooking, it's called the trinity. It is onion, we have a quarter cup of each, by the way, it is onion, it is green green bell pepper, and it is uh, a celery, all a uh, quarter cup. We have a little more than that, almost a half a cup of green onion. We're gonna use that when we cook the crawfish, but also a little bit for garnish later on. And our seasoning blend. We have in here a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Uh, we have a uh, quarter teaspoon of white pepper, quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Uh, then we have a half teaspoon of dried basil and a quarter teaspoon of dried thyme right there in our seasoning blend. And we'll split that up and, and use that in a couple of different times. Now for our roux, uh, by the way, which reminds me, I need to have this pan preheating. So let me do that right now. It's always something I forget, isn't it? So. All right, so this is uh, my roux. I have a quarter cup of oil. Now this is my favorite cooking oil, which is half canola and half uh, clarified butter. I love that oil, uh, but you could use straight up a neutral oil, a vegetable oil. Uh, I would not use any kind of flavored fat other than the clarified butter, such like bacon or sausage. It might overpower what we're trying to accomplish here. So we've got quarter cup of that, a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. I've just got my standard salt and pepper in case we need those. And then right here is, is two cups of actual clam juice I got at the store. Uh, I didn't have any fresh fish stock, uh, but certainly you could use clam juice. You could even use a chicken stock or chicken broth. Uh, if you use a chicken broth, you might do three parts chicken broth to one part water to kind of thin down and, and uh, knock down some of the chicken flavor uh, because this is a more of a seafood dish. So, but if you can get clam stock or even better, if you have a homemade fish stock with lots of gelatin from the bones, then even better than that. Okay. So now uh, the last ingredient, uh, we've got a stick of unsalted butter, which is divided. And we'll use that two different ways. And I'll show you that then. Of course, uh, on hand is my uh, cooking oil our utensils and tools for tonight. Uh, of course, a spatula, we've got a long handled whisk. This is for cooking the roux. The roux can get very hot and sometimes splatter, and you don't want your hand too close with something short. Uh, but I like using a whisk for this because it covers a lot of real estate. If you've never cooked a roux before, don't be intimidated, it's not that difficult. It just takes careful attention because you're cooking the flour at a pretty decent temperature and you can't leave it alone or it will scorch quickly. So this helps cover a lot of real estate in the bottom of the pan to keep that from happening. And it, roux is something that you cannot walk away from. You, you need to do it until you're finished. And then of course a ladle for spooning this into our bowl, which is currently preheating in our oven at the lowest temperature possible. Uh, we wanna serve hot things hot. So we're gonna take care of that. Now, the uh, Dutch oven, oh, and also the Dutch oven. Oh, that got hot quick, didn't it? So we have a Dutch oven here, cast iron enameled. Uh, if, you can use, if you have cast iron, use that. If not, then use a uh, heavy bottom stainless steel uh, saucepan or a good size one. 
uh, but cast iron holds its heat well and uh, works very well for this. So I'm going to put in my oil. As they say in Louisiana, when they start telling you how to cook something, first you make a roux. So we've got that. Then we have our flour. Woo, it's popping on me. Must have got a little water in that. So now I'm immediately going to start whisking this. And this uh, flame is pretty hot. I'm going to turn that down to a medium high versus high. And we're going to start stirring. So this is really it for the next several minutes. We're going to want this to go from a very light blonde roux, which you can see right now. Uh, if you're making biscuits and gravy, the, uh, probably, the, by the way, the first thing my father taught me how to prepare uh, growing up, about six years old, he taught me how to make a roux and how to make gravy for biscuits and gravy or for breakfast on Saturday. So uh, it gets blonde or even a dark blonde. That's where you want it for your uh, gravy. But we want this much darker. We want to get to like what's called a red to brown stage. Now, the thing about roux, it's a common thickener, especially in the South. Of course, uh, the French use as well. But the South really, really uh, loves roux, the cooks in the South, uh, as a thickener. But you, uh, you have various colors for various applications. For example, when the French make their mother sauce bechamel, they, they want no color on it whatsoever. We're going to go for some deep reddish brown, almost mahogany color. And so as you cook roux to a darker stage, uh, it actually loses its thickening power. It gets uh, uh, the inability to thicken quite as much. So uh, what we're doing is getting it to a dark color for flavor purposes. Now, I'm, I have some uh, prepared roux off to the side uh, that is about uh, the stage we're at now. And if we need to thicken it uh, down the road, then we'll pull that out and add that to the uh, etouffee and get that going. All right, we're going to be here for a few minutes, so I'm going to uh, let you... Uh, Go to commercial break. Not really. There's no commercial. So the, it'll be instantaneous for you, but several minutes for me. And then we'll come back when this has reached the kind of color that we need it to do. So be back in just a moment. Okay, welcome back, foodies, home chefs. We are well on our way. We've got us a dark, dark roux here. And uh, it's really... It's really there at the color we want. Now, what we do is we add our Trinity quickly. Uh, and the reason the uh, cooks in Louisiana add the Trinity to the roux is to help cool the roux down. Because you don't want it to, once you get it to your uh, spot that you want it to be the color, you, uh, you don't want it to uh, cook anymore. So we're going to cool this down with this. The roux, will, of course, uh, will give heat off to the uh, Trinity and begin the cooking process for that. And so we'll get that going, too. So let's get that off the heat now, and um, we'll proceed to the next step. So now I'm going to add a spoonful of the seasoning blend and that's going to cook inside the roux a little bit all right now i'm going to move that off to the side and i'm going to go over here and grab my uh, my skillet to cook my crawfish in i forgot to mention that earlier and i'll be back in just a second Okay, so I've got my uh, fry pan, put that on the fire, get the fire turned back up to high, and get this warmed up. Roux is still looking good, cooling down nicely. And we're going to cook the crawfish in here. So as this heats up, we're going to put in one half, of course, we're going to put in one half of a stick of unsalted butter. 
We want to get that melted. Get the crawfish ready. Get my green onions here. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in the green onions I'm going to use. And again, reserving a little bit for the garnish. Again, I think I mentioned that the recipe calls for a pound of crawfish. And I am doing a pound and a half. So um, you can see that the bubble, uh, the bubbles, the butter is bubbling. So that means the pan is not quite hot yet. So what will happen once the pan gets to the point where you're ready to put your meat in or cook in it, uh, the butter gets hot enough, then the, uh, the actual bubbling will subside. Uh, this bubble indicates that the water, the butter is an emulsion of water, butter fat, and butter uh butter oil butter fat butter fat butter solid that's i'll get it out eventually so it's butter solids butter fat and water in an uh, emulsion together the heat breaks that emulsion apart and now the bubbles indicate the water is coming off and creating steam which you can see is i'm beginning a facial right now it smells pretty darn good though i have to say that now crawfish are only in season in the spring, uh, I think somewhere in the April uh, through June, maybe early July, depending on where you're at. Uh, so these are not fresh, these are frozen. If you're fortunate enough to have fresh, please use that. All right, now the bubbles have subsided. I don't want the butter to turn brown, so I am actually going to put the crawfish in right now. Uh, these are uh, frozen, so and while they're in season, they're harvested, then uh, picked uh, or peeled, deveined, and uh, they're usually either partially or fully cooked. Whatever package or brand you get will tell you that. Uh, there are many brands that look uh, like they're from Louisiana that have Chinese crawfish in origin. Take a look, make sure you understand where your product comes from. But then there's others uh, that will clearly say from Louisiana. If you can get those, please do. The difference in price is not that much. Uh, I paid a little over $15 a pound for these. Uh, I think the ones I saw from China were at $14 a pound. It's not worth the difference. Now, these are a little smaller than I normally like. I usually like the larger ones, but this is what was available to me when I picked this up. Uh, and I'm just going to make sure they're thoroughly cooked through with the butter and the green onions. And then I will set that off to the side. So we look good there. So that's done, and that's ready to uh, put into the etouffee once we get that ready again. So we're going to bring this back to heat. And now we're going to grab the uh, clam juice. We're going to make sure this gets warmed up again. And then a little at a time, I'm going to whisk uh, the clam juice in making sure it's thoroughly incorporated into the roux. And as it does, it will thicken a little bit. And this is thickening. But we won't know until a little bit later if we need the additional uh, light-colored roux to help thicken it some. Now, I believe the recipe calls for a cup and a half of this, so make sure I'm... I'm, down, I'm about a cup is in there. I mean, I, excuse me, a half a cup is in there. <coughs> excuse me. All right. So let's stop right there with that and just check where we are with everything. So now we've got a nice little soup going, a stew going, very dark in color. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Uh, let me go ahead and heat this up again. Where is, there we are. 
we'll put this on this front burner it doesn't work as well um, as this one but I intended to uh, put in actually I'll tell you what I'm not going to use that at all I'm just going to wait we'll move it over here now I have to be very careful now not to allow that to scorch on the bottom So now we're going to sprinkle the, the rest of the seasoning into the crawfish. I should have done this earlier. All right. I'm an old man. I forget things. Wouldn't be a, the Chef Wet Show if I didn't forget things, right? So there's my seasoning. I'm going to blend that in really well. Move this to the side for just a moment. Now... We're actually just going to move these into the etouffee itself. All that rich butter is going in there. Very nice. Now, let me get rid of this. Okay, now let's stir this in. Oh, it just looks so beautiful. Okay, I can't resist. I've got to get a, see where we're at on everything. Remember when you're cooking to taste things as you go along? Most dishes you don't really need to season until the very last minute, but you definitely want to season the taste. <clears throat> it's got a little bite to it. <clears throat> Woo! <clears throat> Okay, now we're back. As I was saying, not too much. I want to add a little bit. <clears throat> By the way, <clears throat> obviously, and I think it's mostly from the cayenne and the white pepper. This has got a little bit of a kick to it. But, I think that's good. And I'm going to let that come to, uh, to heat again. And we're going to do a couple things. Clean up my mess. I'm going to go and uh, prepare my rice. I will be right back. Okay, all I have to do now is grab my bowl. And in fact, this is hot enough. I'm going to turn this down. And just that quickly, we've made a crawfish etouffee. Now let's uh, plate it. I'm going to take my towel, come to my oven, turn it off. Now I've taken my rice and I've molded it into a little ramekin or a small soup bowl. Uh, and now I'm going to invert it onto the the bowl itself and try to get this thing off without slipping too much get that nice and centered make it pretty so now what we're going to do we'll take our ladle and we'll spoon it in i need to be a little less messy my mother said I was a bull in the china closet, the china, whatever, whatever they say. You know what? Can't believe I forgot it again. All right, as always, I forgot something else. I forgot to add the finishing touch, which is the butter into the etouffee so i'm going to put the rest of the butter in there and i put one in the bowl because it was just too messy to try to get out stir that around so the butter actually finishes the french call this mount with well, in english it's mount with butter i can't really pronounce it in french so i don't try so this gives it a sheen and an additional richness so you don't have to be perfect to cook at home and cook delicious food in fact i highly advise against it all right, so that's going to melt. 
Now I'm going to clean up my bowl. I'm going to stir this butter in though. So what we're doing is we're emulsifying the butter and the residual or carryover heat in the pan. And it just makes it rich and glossy. Very pretty. Now, let me clean this up. That bowl is still a touch warm, like more than a touch. Clean this up nicely. We'll get this away off to the side. Now I'm going to garnish. Little pop of color there. And friends, you have crawfish etouffee and I cannot wait to try it. Hold up for a second. All right, isn't that beautiful? Turn, even with all my uh, foibles and screw-ups, it turned out beautifully. By the way, as I taste this thing, please smash that like button, share this video with your friends and family, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. So let's dig in. Now, you saw me taste it earlier I right out of the bowl as I was tasting for seasoning, and it kind of blew my throat out. So let's hopefully it'll, it'll calm down a little bit. So to help with that, I'm, the rice will help uh, tone down the spiciness of it and of course you can adjust the seasonings any way you want you do you if you don't like it as spicy then uh, certainly cut back especially on the white pepper and the cayenne uh, easily turn that put that cayenne to a half a teaspoon instead of a whole but here we go mm. Mm. so it's still spicy but with the rice and the crawfish now added, um, it's toned it down. And that makes it so delicious. Let me get another bite. Mm. Oh, that is so good. You guys make this thing and let me know in the comments uh, what you think about it as well. So thank you for joining me on the Chef Lance Show, Crawfish Etouffee, Louisiana style. Make it, love it. You're going to enjoy this so much. It's delicious. So appreciate you being here. Come back again next week, every Thursday. And remember this, a day in the kitchen beats a day of working any day. Hey, you want to you wanna bite? Come around. Here you go. Now, you like things spicy, don't you? Yes, I do like spicy. I just need the little green things out of the way. Oh, that's right. You don't do the onion thing. <laughs> You've got this taste texture thing, and mm -hmm. someday I'm going to get you over that. Maybe the doctor has a pill for it. <laughs> Problem is, I don't like pills. Oh, that's right. You don't take pills well either. Okay. <laughs> All right. What do you think? Mm. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good, isn't it? Very. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think I know what we're having for dinner tonight. I was waiting for that. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. we can finish this up later, but time for cleanup. Yes, Let's go. Know. Man, <coughs> wow, that hit me hard, which is probably why they serve rice with it. Okay, what was I coming for? I'm going to thin it just a little bit. <coughs> oh, 
<clears throat> All right. <clears throat> My lovely assistant's going to hand me some water. <clears throat> I mean to tell you, that knocked a hole in me. Thank you very much. Woo! <clears throat> that kicked my, uh, you know what? 